So even though my toddler broke her microwave by pushing up the counter, I was still excited to see what I could do with the components inside. I thought I'd make a rotating pedestal for the giraffe sculpture I have, and the microwave's platter can do just that. First I'm thinking I'd cut three circles out of wood, a top, a middle, and a bottom. I'd cut a smaller circle out of the middle piece so it'd become a ring and then glue it to the top piece. I'd drill a large hole into the inner side and epoxy the plastic thing that fits over the motor shaft inside. With the bottom piece I'd route a circular groove for the platter wheels to follow. Then drill a small hole near the center and route a groove from the hole to the outside edge. At this point I'd mount the motor and center its shaft with the bottom piece. Then take a lamp cord that has an inline switch and run it through the groove and up the hole to connect to the motor. After putting the felt feet on the bottom, I'd take the wheels the platter sat on and place it in the circular channel around the motor. Then place the top piece on top, sliding the embedded plastic piece over the motor shaft. The wheels would then take the weight of the top piece and anything being on display, but would roll to let the pedestal rotate. First I cut three squares out of three quarter inch plywood, all 13 by 13 inches. Then mark the center of each one so I can drill a fourth inch hole. I mark the surface of my table saw at six and a half quarter inches from the highest point on the blade. Then I drill a fourth inch hole into the surface, being careful not to drill into the table saw's motor less than two inches below, and make sure my bolt can fit through. Next I drop the blade all the way down and place the wood square over it, running the bolt through the hole in the wood and the table saw. This gives me a stable pivot point to rotate the wood while slowly raising my blade. As you can see this cuts a circular groove in the underside of the wood, but I'm not done yet. I raise the blade again and repeat this process until eventually the blade starts cutting through the top side. The end result is a perfect circle with a 12 and a half inch diameter. I then cut two more circles at the same size. I didn't like the idea of having to drill a new hole in my table saw every time I wanted to cut a different size circle, so I developed a jig. I took a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood and centered a point 2 inches from one end. I then used a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit and drilled about an eighth inch in. Then drilled all the way through with a 3 16th bit. The 3 16th hole is just small enough so that my bolt can be threaded through it, making it tight and not wobbly. The bolt's convenient large flat head recesses into the larger hole to become flush with the wood surface. My jig is ready and can be clamped to the edge of the table saw with the bolt at any distance from the blade. I then place the jig 3 and 3 quarter inches from my blade and raise it only about 3 sixteenths into one of the circles and give it a full rotation. I then readjust the 3 and 7 eighths inches and do it again. This makes a circular groove that will keep the platter wheels in check. With another piece, I marked out a circle with a 4 and a half inch radius and cut that out. This is dangerous but produces a wooden ring that will glue to the top circle. This ring is too thick for the wheels to work, so I sum my jig at 4 and 7 16 and cut a circle from MDF laminate that will fill in some of the space. I then figure out how much space the motor will need and cut that out of the center, resulting in another ring. The MDF smooth surface should help the platter wheels roll better. I then glue the larger ring to the top piece, followed by the MDF ring in the middle. I clamp it down and let it dry overnight. After it's dry, I bore a 1 and 3 quarter inch hole into the underside, being careful not to drill through. Drilling as far as I could still isn't deep enough to let the motor shaft slide in far enough, so I start sanding down the plastic piece. I quickly realized my drill press could sand it down much faster than my hand. Eventually, the piece is able to fit further inside the wood to eliminate any rocking. With the motor and wheels inside, I turn the top piece around and carefully remove it after deciding it was centered well enough. The motor is now positioned so its shaft is in the center of the pedestal, so I drill pilot holes and screw it down. Next, I drill a 3 quarter inch hole next to the motor for the power cord. Now I can finally see how well it works. The top piece doesn't seem to be off center and it takes away my giraffe with relative ease, so I mix up some epoxy and embed the plastic piece. Next, I use my table saw to cut out a groove for the power cord. I quickly realized this would have been easier to do when the circle was still a square. Nonetheless, I crack on and use a flathead screwdriver to chisel out anything left over. Next, I prep everything for painting by sanding all surfaces and using my compressor's air gun to remove any sawdust. I then apply three coats of black eggshell paint to all visible surfaces. I paint nearly half the top piece before remembering that I was going to glue the top part of the Lazy Susan to my project. As the paint dries, I remove the cord from this lamp I got from my local thrift store. This turns out to be much easier than I originally thought. I strip the wires and clamp on female spade connectors so the cord can plug right into the motor's terminals. I use black spray paint to cover up this clear spot left over from when I pulled the Lazy Susan apart. It's not perfect, but it looks better than it did before. I then use two tubes of super glue to glue the glass onto the top piece. I sandwich the glass between the top and bottom pieces and just lightly clamp it down. After it's dry, I stick felt feet on the bottom, run the power cord through its hole, reattach the motor, connect the cord to the motor, and use a staple gun to hold the cord in its place. I then put the wheels in their groove, slide the top over the motor shaft, and my self-rotating display pedestal is complete. Without even trying, I gave it a black and white motif that fits really well in my dining room. I also noticed that the direction it will start turning when turned on is random, and changing the motor's polarity has no effect on it. So thank you for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, or comment on this video, and I'll see you next time.